Hello folks, I think we'll get started now. Uh, thanks for everybody for being here. Uh, on this call, uh, we've got uh, me, David, uh, product manager for Ecotrope, to talk about a few of the new features that we are, uh, we've been working on. Uh, we've got three features and we've scheduled this uh, for uh, not too much time. So we're gonna go through them pretty quickly and show you exactly what they're about and uh, have some time for question and answer at the end. Uh, we also have uh, Jacob Kamen on the line and Sarah Bullock. Uh, as well. So hopefully they'll be able to um, get all of your uh, questions answered and we'll be able to follow up uh, with anything uh, that you might have. Uh, feel free to put questions in the chat uh, as they come up and we can work on those and um, you know maybe answer them in real time or address them at the end during the question and answer. It looks like we've got uh, you know quite a few people here and we'll get started here. So first, uh, we're going to talk about three features here. Uh, the first being Inspection Sync. And Inspection Sync is a tool to automate your data entry. Uh, we know uh, that a lot of people have, uh, you know, take a lot of time to transcribe data from whatever field inspection tool you use into Ecotrope. And so we want to make that a little bit easier. And that's how we came up with the idea and why we made Inspection Sync. After that, we'll talk about scenario modeling, which helps you quickly evaluate builders uh, design change requests or helps you figure out how they can pass 45L or new energy codes. And finally, we'll talk about QA track. Uh, it allows you to complete QA tasks in app. That way, uh, everything is contained in one place. You know exactly how much QA needs to be done, and you can uh, do the actual QA checklist uh, right next to the energy model. Uh, that way, you're not having to use multiple screens uh, like we all are uh, in our day, but it makes it a little bit simpler. So we'll kind of cover why of each of these features, uh, what each feature does, and how to get started using them. And then after that, we'll do some questions and answer uh, as, the, as we finish up. All right, we'll dive right in here with Inspection Sync. Uh, so probably have a few people on staff that kind of look like this, uh, just smashing the keyboard, trying to transcribe data from all of the inspections you do uh, every day and into Ecotrope. And this work uh, is duplicate data entry. And duplicate data entry is duplicate work. Uh, your field raters collect the data, and uh, it ought to go straight into Ecotrope after that. Uh, and what the, the problems that this causes is that, is that you kind of have a backlog of this data entry work. You can't send uh, reports to your clients as soon as they would like it. Uh, and it's an opportunity for errors. Uh, if you are transcribing data every single time, you may have a fat finger error. You can't imagine Jim Carrey is too accurate uh, typing like this. So what we've seen with Inspection Sync is that it could eliminate five to 20 minutes of data entry uh, time per energy model. Uh, it allows you to update all of your energy models you inspected in that day or that week all at once. Uh, so you can update hundreds or you know tens or however many you want uh, in the same amount of time without doing any data transcription. It also reduces that potential fat finger mistakes. And that's really good because if you're doing QA on a project and you find an error, you have to trace down where that error came from. And Inspection Sync eliminates uh, the potential that the transcription was the problem. Uh, and so you can don't have to worry about finding that error and just skip over that kind of QA process and go straight to, to the field inspector record the data correctly. Uh, and again, it eliminates the data uh, entry backlog that your staff um, may have. So you may think, what is exactly Inspection Sync? Inspection Sync is the connection between inspection, your inspection app and Ecotrope. Uh, it's the process of sending data from your inspection, sync, inspection app to Ecotrope. It's not an inspection app. It's just the connection, uh, but it's not just a connection. It you know, enables all of those good benefits that we were talking about. So I'm gonna show you quickly what this looks like. I've mocked up a set of tools here. Uh, first is an uh, example Ecotrope uh, app here that has some template energy models in it. And these template energy models, you can think of as being a subdivision that you are using a template energy model over and over again. 
and uh, you need to go out and inspect for a specific address that that specific address is equivalent to what you have uh, in this energy model. I've also made a kind of project management tool in Google Sheets, and this helps me uh, manage all of my inspections that I need to do today. And in this inspection app, uh, we have one inspection that uses this template uh, Stanton energy model, which you can see here. And we have a final inspection scheduled for today. And I've done some things on the back end of this uh, Google Sheet to send uh, an inspection form with the data from Ecotrope to my inspection app, which we can see here. Oops, discard that. We can have an inspection form right here. Now, this inspection was just uh, populated with data uh, from this Google Sheet, One Marina Park Drive, as well as information from the Ecotrope energy model. And let me oops, pull this up. And if you tab through this inspection app, this is just an example. Uh, we have all of the data uh, for the uh, inspection that I need to verify. You know, Inspection Sync allows it to be pre filled or it cannot be pre filled, whatever your preference is here. Uh, and so maybe we go to the site and we see uh, it's not uh, two floors on grade, it's only one floor on grade, and there's not three bedrooms. There's only two bedrooms. So I'm going to update that once I do the inspection. And I've set this up so that when I submit the inspection, it's going to send a inspection sync uh, data file to my Dropbox account. And that inspection sync data file could have one energy model or multiple energy models in it. In this case, it's just going to have one. So you can imagine at the end of the day for for every energy model, when your inspectors have collected all the information they uh, need for the inspections, the final inspections of that day, uh, one person uh, in your office could go to batch actions, upload the inspection sync JSON file, and grab that file that has all of the data in it for all the inspections in the day, uh, press open, and upload it. Now, what this is going to do is it's going to find every single energy model in Ecotrope that you have collected data on in the field in this inspection sync file. And it's going to take that data and upload the energy model with that field verified data. And when it does that, it gives you a little message there. It also sends you an email saying the, the completion status. Now, if I up open this, you'll see there's now two uh, building designs. Uh, one was the original one and one is with inspection data. And when you open that up, it'll have all of the, the edits and all of the, the final inspection data uh, that you just uh, collected, that we just collected in this energy model. Uh, a couple other things that it, it updates that are rather unique, uh, it'll search your uh, equipment library for the right mechanical systems based on the model number. So your field raters only have to collect the model number. And if it doesn't find the correct one, uh, it will give you a dialog box that says, hey, we didn't find the correct one. Tell us which one you want to use. Uh, it will also update all of the wall components and envelope components with the raw data that you've collected amongst lower door and duct blaster, lighting counts, and you know everything else you, uh, you can imagine in a uh, inspection. So we're going to uh, step back out of there. That is essentially inspection sync uh, right there, that connection. You have to keep my eye on the time here because we're, we have so many features here to show you. Uh, so the impact of that is saving five to 15 minutes of uh, data entry per energy model. Uh, we like to call inspection sync in sync for short. Um, and so that means you can deliver your ratings just in time uh, while you automate your data uh, entry workflow. And if you want to get started, you can implement this with your existing tools. Uh, we build it so it can work with multiple types of uh, inspection apps. Uh, some uh, tools we've seen used are Pronto Forms, uh, works really well. We know that the folks at Dash and Energy Smack are working on implementing this workflow into their apps as well. And uh, otherwise, you can implement it using your own tools. There is some coding involved if you need to do that. Uh, but we have the full documentation for that 
uh, to review um, for you if you'd like. So if you'd like, you can sign up and start using it today. All right, so that brings us to scenario modeling. And scenario modeling is uh, kind of an entirely different tool. This is something to really enhance your uh, analysis capabilities for all of your builders. So we've heard that uh, many of you uh, do, your builders will ask you how uh, a new product or new specification will impact all of their energy models. You know, they may be saying, uh, we can't do two by sixes, we gotta figure out another way uh, to build our homes. And they wanna know if we don't do two by six and we have to do this, what's the impact of that? Uh, do I still pass energy code? Do I still earn my 45L tax credit? Do I still, you know, what have you? And to do that, you need to analyze all of those energy models and figure out what the impact is. The other thing you could be doing is they may say, you know, we want to uh, pass this new IECC energy code, you know, 2021 or any new 45L requirement. And you need to help them understand what are their options to achieve those uh, plans. So you'll probably uh, pick up a representative energy model, figure out how it passes and say, you know, this energy model passed with this. So uh, most likely uh, the other energy models in your portfolio will also pass doing these things. The other cases, you know, maybe uh, they come to you with a half built home and say, hey, I got to pass energy code. I didn't know. What can I do to get this home to pass energy code? And you have to figure out testing, you know, dozens of different uh, design changes, mechanical systems, wall or windows, how to get it to pass energy code. And that takes some time. You can also use scenario modeling to figure out uh, more ways uh, and increase their 45L compliance and use that as a value add to your, to your clients. So we've heard that this is hard and I have experience doing this. Um, before I worked at Ecotrope working in uh, affordable multifamily housing, figuring out how a existing home could reduce their energy uh, uh, consumption by like 25%. You just throw dozens of different things at that energy model and you have to keep track of what the impact of each individual thing was and then have a chart that says, here are your, is your options, your ingredients, your recipes of how to achieve this. What do you want to do? Now, scenario modeling does that for you. It allows you to say, this is the things I want to test. And then it will go and apply all of those different design changes to the set of energy models and, find, and it will report back to you exactly what the impact was on one or a thousand energy models uh, within like 20 minutes. So it really makes you have a super powerful computational uh, engine to analyze design changes. So far, uh, we've been doing this uh, for a few uh, energy raters as kind of a beta trial. And that beta trial, we've been doing it kind of, uh, uh, we get the information and then we code the information in on the back end and run the iterations. And we've done over a million combinations so far. Uh, and it's been really cool to see uh, <laughs> these <laughs> computations happen in real time. So I'm gonna show you kind of what it, uh, what it looks like right now. So we have an app uh, up here. Uh, this is a mocked up Ecotrope Raider app uh, that has the user interface of scenario modeling built in, but it's not connected to the back end computational power of it. Uh, we're using this to kind of show you what it looks like. So, to start out with scenario modeling, uh, we first can filter to a particular builder, and then we can select the energy models we want to analyze. In this case, we've selected uh, five energy models. And then we'll be able to select scenario modeling down here. And when we do that, we'll, this, uh, this modal box will show up that will allow us to uh, select the design changes we want to model. And the design changes anything from a different wall component to a different mechanical system uh, to um, tighter building envelope. We're going to add a design change. It's going to be a ceiling or roof. And we're going to say, what if this, they, they did R33 foam roof in this home? And this uh, types will be from your library of uh, ceiling and roof envelope types. 
Once we select that, we can add a condition. And a condition is when and where this design change should be applied. Do we want to apply it to all ceiling and roofs? Or do we only want to apply it to roofs in a particular location? Uh, so we're going to do that. Apply it to a specific location. And then we're going to add a few more design changes. This is going to speed it up a little bit. And we now have three design changes that we're going to test. You know, what if we do a rim joist upgrade? What if we do a wall upgrade? Let me make this a little bit bigger. So now that we have three design changes that we're going to test, we're going to make some scenarios. The scenario is kind of the recipe of what you're testing. And each scenario can have one or all or a selection of the design changes. In this case, we're going to select all of them. So in this scenario, we're going to say, what happens if we do all three of these things on all five of those energy models? I'm going to add another scenario and say, what happens if I just do the first one, if I only upgrade the walls? And you could do this for up to 20 different scenarios and have a bunch of different combinations. Finally, I'm going to do results. How do I want to analyze this? I want to see what the impact is on HERS index, Energy Star, uh, maybe 45L. You know, anything that's kind of in Ecotrope as a report uh, will be like we'll be able to support here. And this will tell us what the impact is for um, these scenarios on these energy models. Finally, I'm going to re review and submit this. I'm going to see what scenarios have what and what analysis is being provided. And I'll press run. This is going to send this to Ecotrope and it's going to go to our server and run all the different combinations. Uh, this can do up to 1,000 energy models and up to 20 scenarios. So that's 20,000 different combinations that are possible that will be computated and sent back to you in a report. That report uh, looks like this. Uh, it will show you uh, what all of the design changes you uh, model and what design changes were in each report and the impact of each. So in the, this first scenario, the average HERS index was 53.2. If we look all the way at the end here, we'll see that the average originally was 60.2. Uh, so we can see that this scenario dropped the average HERS index by seven or 6.8 uh, index points. So you can go and see which ones are the best for your builder and show them that this uh, increases the uh, 45L tax credit this is what the impact of any of these things would be on your uh, home performance. Uh, another example of a report here is a kind of a heat map of the same uh, scenarios to easily show you uh, exactly what uh, the best you know, scenario is for HERS index performance uh, or you know, 45L uh, tax credit uh, passing rate. So scenario modeling comes in a couple different varieties. Um, like I said, we are in a kind of a beta trial right now. We are actively building the user interface and should have the user interface available to you uh, in a month or two. And that will uh, allow you to sign up and use this uh, on a daily basis in your own workflow. We have two varieties. Uh, we have solo scenario modeling and batch scenario modeling. Solo scenario modeling allows you to analyze one energy model at a time, and batch allows you to model up to a thousand at a time. So it's like, are you more commonly just analyzing one or a batch of energy models? So we can figure out which one works best for you and uh, you know, get you the right solution. If you, uh, if you sign up for solo scenario modeling um, from this webinar, we are gonna like package in one free batch scenario modeling project in there. So that way you can use solo scenario modeling to get an idea of how it works, and then use that free batch scenario modeling project to really test it out. And uh, I think it's a great way to learn how the tool works and get familiar with it and, and learn how all the other types of analysis that you can use. All right. So I have a couple minutes to talk about QA track before we move on uh, to some question and answer. 
Uh, so QA track uh, is a, a tool to keep track of QA uh, and maintain your ResNet accreditation uh, right within Ecotrope. So uh, I was a QAD and a QA manager before I came to Ecotrope. And I, I knew that working with the ResNet building registry was kind of slow and cumbersome. Uh, and I tried to stay out of it as much as possible as a result. Um, and I also wanted to track all my QA work before the energy models actually ended up in the building registry. That might just be my opinion. Um, it's, I think some other people share that as well. Um, this allows you to do that uh, if you want to. Uh, it also helps to be able to share QA totals um, I found across our entire QA team and as well as the raters. So they knew where they stood for QA and they, could, they knew that they were uh, kind of up to date. Finally, uh, the ResNet requires the QA checklist uh, now. And filling that out is difficult uh, because you have to have it uh, in an Excel sheet. You may have to have it pulled up in a second window on your computer. And you're trying to manage how to fit all of the documentation uh, that you're reviewing, architectural plans, uh, AHRI certificates, this checklist and Ecotrope all on uh, a few screens. And that's hard. And it, uh, the QA checklist is just kind of hard to fill out. And finally, the annual QA report uh, just takes a lot of time. And so that time means that you can't focus on kind of what matters, the actual QA or delivering good service to your, your clients. So we're, we're building is a, a feature that will allow you to select which energy models you're going to QA in the Ecotrope, record that QA information, complete the QA checklist in app, and then generate those QA reports uh, so you can uh, save them to the building registry and eventually send them directly to the building registry from Ecotrope, as well as a real-time dashboard of QA status and quotas for all of your users. Again, this is something that we're like actively building right now. We have it about 35% done or so. We're working on the rest of it. Uh, so uh, basically, I'm going to show you a few images of, of here of what, it, of what it looks like and what we're working on. So first off, you'll be able to label projects for as uh, having been selected QA or what their QA status is. And you'll be able to filter projects in the filter by filter bar by what their QA status is. Is it complete? Are you reviewing it right now? Is it a, a file QA? Is it a field QA? You will filter for those. Uh, once you uh, select a project for QA, you also will have a dashboard that says uh, who the rater or RFI is, how many energy models they've completed, how many file or field QA they need uh, to stay compliant with ResNet. Oops. That way, everything is in one place. You don't have to uh, look at Ecotrope, go to the building registry to go find that information. It's just all right here uh, in front of you. Once you uh, have marked an energy model for QA, you'll be able to record the QA information in there as well. Uh, did it pass? Did it fail? Uh, any notes that you need to pass on to the, the rater of, of what happened? Uh, the date completed, um, all that information that goes in the QA report at the end of the year uh, will be right here in the control. Finally, I think probably most exciting for, for most people is actually the built-in QA checklist. Uh, so when you're completing the, the QA for each of these energy models, as you go through Ecotrope, you'll have the QA checklist at your fingertips. So you can fill out what that score is and see immediately whether or not that home passes or that rater passes file QA or field QA. And it's right there in app. That way you don't have to go and keep track of another document. Uh, once you're done with it in app, um, you'll be able to download just a PDF report that shows the results of it. And then eventually, as soon as ResNet uh, builds this functionality, which they planned on, they're planning on building this year, we'll send this result directly to the building registry for you. That way, it's all seamless. It's all done straight from Ecotrope. So, if you want to get started using the QA uh, QA track, you know, let us know. Uh, we can you can immediately begin recording QA in Ecotrope today, and the QA dashboard, QA checklist. Uh, should be rolled out in the next uh, few weeks to a month or so. Uh, and pricing is based on the, your kind of provider size. You know, how many confirmed ratings will you be using this on? 
and it's uh, we can contact us and we can walk you through uh, how that works. Uh, that way we uh, um, can get you in the right plan. So I think that leaves us some time for question and answer here. Uh, we have kind of three new features, uh, inspection sync, so you can automate your data entry, scenario modeling, so you can quickly evaluate builder's requests, and QA track, uh, that way you can complete QA tasks in app uh, with Ecotrope and not have to use any other tools for that. Yeah, David, I can read a few to you right now. We have a couple in the chat. I'll kind of go Great. in the order that you presented. So first question is regarding to inspection sync and is regarding to the uh, model number matching. And somebody wanted to know that if you don't have a perfect match or something doesn't match up perfectly, how will you be notified? Will you be notified when doing it? Will you get an email? And what level of granularity do I have to going in, you know, editing that change? Right, so if the model number for mechanical systems, I'm guessing we're talking about, right? Correct. Is uh, if it's not an exact match, um, our matching algorithm right now, um, well, let me take a step back. Uh, model numbers are a nightmare, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware. Um, yeah, they are sometimes overdefined and sometimes underdefined and sometimes both at the same time. Uh, and so matching is very difficult uh, at times. So if the match is not exact, uh, there are there will be a, a, um, a window that pops up when you upload that file and it will say, you uh, reported this model number. We didn't find a match. Here is a list of all of the mechanical systems in your library. Which one would you like to use? That way you can say, oh, right, this isn't quite right. Here, this one is the correct one. And when you do that, you can save it and we'll apply that to your uh, to the energy models that that model number was in. And then you're able to go and say, Let's go and add that um, model number to that equipment library afterwards so you don't have to do it a second time. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to switch gears now to um, not QA track, not such thing, scenario modeling. <laughs> and mix them myself. So I had a couple of questions here along a similar theme. Let's say we do my scenarios and I get ones I like, or I kind of know what I'm going for. Is there a way that I could uh, save the best orientation as a model that would be modeled? Or is there anything that can turn into an ecotrope project? Or is there any way to get from the data to the actual model in the software? Yeah. Uh, so most of the design changes that are supported in scenario modeling you'll be able to make those changes using the batch modification tool as well. Um, we understand that it won't be quite comprehensive enough, but it's, it covers like 90% of it. Uh, and so that's kind of initially how we can uh, you know, propagate those design changes or that scenario into the energy models you wanna, that you wanna keep around. Uh, it is on our, our pipeline as well to say, uh, save those scenarios to the library so you can read use the, the scenarios over and over again. And then also in that pipeline is to say, oh, that was a good one, let's apply it. And it'll just go and say, uh, apply that scenario to the energy models you just modeled. Uh, that's in the pipeline. Uh, it's a little more complex, so we're, um, we're working on it. But uh, uh, right now you can make all the changes, uh, most, most of all the changes using batch modifications. Great. and. Uh, along a similar lines, is there any reason why these scenarios, uh, you know, may not exist or may not be created as actual projects, and why they kind of live um, on a spreadsheet as opposed to being made? Is it you know size, complexity, or can you speak to that a little bit, please? Like why the when you make the scenario, the, the it's not a brand new project. Um, for exactly. The, why why don't we create a bunch of new projects? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so all of the, the scenarios are, like Jake was saying, they're temporary changes. We make the change and then we undo the change. Um, and we do that one because of how many uh, energy models would be created. Uh, if we created every single one of them, you know, there would be um, a million additional energy models in our database. 
uh, today compared to where we were uh, three months ago. Uh, and that's, I mean, that's not even that important. Um, we just thought that it's more, uh, uh, it matches what's happening um, because we don't know what scenario people actually want to, to save um, at the beginning. You're usually evaluating various options at that point. Awesome. Thank you. And now let's um, go to QA track for me. Here's some Q, QA track questions. Just give me a second. So for the the actual um, QA items themselves, how, what level granularity do we get? Is it just per project? Is it specific items within a project? Do I have to mark just, you know, the fact that a project does or does not pass or can I go in there like item by item and really dive in, and, you know, kind of use as like a training tool, for instance, or reference later on. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, so right now, uh, it, you'll label a project as, or an energy model as being selected for QA. And uh, then you'll be able to say it was selected for QA, uh, it passed or failed, uh, and what type of QA it was, file, field, energy star, hers. And uh, you won't be able to say this uh, specific piece of the energy model is wrong, but you do report that in the in-app QA checklist. Uh, so as you're going through the QA checklist, there is 41 different items that you report on. And one of those items is, you know, uh, window air windows, and you'll mark whether or not the windows, you know, are, are correct or not. And uh, so that data will be recorded there and you can leave a note about it there. Um, so there is that potential to, to connect it directly to the windows and Ecotrope. Um, it's uh, it's that connection though is largely just defined in the checklist at this point. Awesome, thank you. And is there a timeline for QA track? Yeah, so you, uh, QA track can you can use it right now to uh, mark which energy models have been QA. And the next uh, uh, month, uh, we should have about a month from now. We should have uh, the QA checklist. Uh, and QA dashboard all complete in app and ready to be used by uh, by our users. <clears throat> Excuse me. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna work backwards on you a little bit here. So that was yeah. QA track. I'm gonna go back into scenario modeling. <clears throat> and we had a question um, regarding templates and locked projects. You know, a lot of people tend to lock mm -hmm. their projects once they know they have this design. They don't want other people to touch it. Could we still do um, scenario modeling on a locked project per se? Yes, you can. Yeah. Awesome. Now, could you, um, I'm going to transition back one more step here, all the way back to inspection sync. So for training for inspection sync, I know we have documentation for developers, some documentation for Pronto Forms. Um, do we plan on releasing any videos? Do we have any onboarding guidance or what's our plan to kind of help users get started with this feature? Yeah, definitely. So there's a couple things. Uh, first, we are going to have a session at the virtual resident conference in May, I think now, uh, that will have a deeper dive in how to implement uh, inspection sync. And I, I guess that's where I'm taking this question is, uh, is uh, more training on how to implement it. Um, and uh, so we'll have that opportunity. Uh, we're also, you know, uh, we can help uh, point you in the right direction and outline how this uh, the workflows uh, work to connect your tools. And we're also happy to help you out on which tools kind of off the shelf work the best uh, with inspection sync. Uh, like I just showed you, I use Pronto Forms. Uh, and so I did a fair amount of research to, to understand which inspection tools are out there and what their capabilities are and landed on Pronto Forms. Um, as being one that, that I could uh, make the connection really, really quickly. Um, so we have a fair amount of experience on how to, to do that, that, uh, that integration, and we can definitely help you understand what that is and, and, and help you through that process. 
Awesome, thanks. I think a couple of people had questions about learning and onboarding, so that was, that was I'm sure very helpful. Another question regarding inspection sync, uh, reporting. Uh, so for the items that are recorded in Ecotrope, is there any special, I'm sorry, recorded with inspection sync to be sent to Ecotrope? Is there any special additional reporting that we are adding to this feature or is it assumed that you have updated the models in Ecotrope now you can print reports with these new updated values? Okay, uh, the, I think I understand this question. We may need some clarification from the person who posted this, but once the, when you upload an inspection or when you update an energy model with inspection sync, the uh, building design that is, has been updated uh, will have a, be renamed to say, uh, not renamed, just at the end of the name, it'll say updated with inspection sync to indicate that it was updated. And then if you go into the energy model itself, any uh, building component that has been updated with inspection sync uh, will also be renamed. That way you uh, can verify that you understand where that update came from. And I, I said renamed that uh, building component, and I should kind of like that could sound scary, but uh, it's not. What, what happens is that if you're updating that build, that wall component, for example, uh, you have an existing library entry in that wall component and inspection sync will copy that and put in your data that you just specified in inspection sync in its place. And that new component that you just created with inspection sync, uh, it will be named based on the contents. So if you say this wall is two by four with R13 in it, it'll name that component two by four with R13. So you, it's a very descriptive name. And it'll say created with inspection sync. So you know exactly where it came from. You know that your field inspector recorded that information and uh, uploaded it. So you have an idea of where it came from. Uh, that library component won't be added specifically to your library. Uh, so it's not cluttering up your library. It'll only be in that energy model and it'll be isolated there. So uh, you can trace the, if, there, if it was recorded incorrectly, you can trace exactly to where it came from because you can see who uploaded that. You can see who completed that inspection and know, hey, did they record that data correctly? And you can answer that question really quickly because um, you can go look at their, uh, their field notes. With respect to um, uploading or downloading reports, um, the, as soon as you've uploaded the data, the Ecotrope model will still be able to download reports. Um, if you upload it to a confirmed energy model that's been uploaded to the building registry, um, you will need to re-upload it to the building registry to reactivate those confirmed reports, just as if you had made, a, made an edit to an energy model uh, by hand, uh, like it is today. Awesome, thanks. So to kind of recap briefly there, when I use inspection sync and I make a change, maybe I see a different wall type in the field than what was in my model, Ecotrope will create a, uh, almost like a temporary library type to put in my model. That way I can complete the energy model, I can complete my project, but it's not gonna affect my project's library. Then yeah. that's to complete the, the actual modeling. And then when it comes time to reporting, I can report this newly created project just like I would any other project and I'll have all the values that I inputted from the field. Is that an accurate summary? Yep, yep. And then you can upload it to building registry with the yellow button or the API, you know, however you do that. Awesome. Uh, we have time for one, maybe two more questions or probably one last question here. And I'll just ask you, you know, a lot of people have existing tools of their own to, you know, go out in the field, track where people are, things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Are there ways that this can be integrated into existing program that I may have? Definitely. Uh, we build it the way we build it to accommodate that. Um, we, I have a list of uh, tools and kind of how they work well um, that we'll share with you after this. Um, if you're using a uh, the, the kind of the number one requirement though is you need to be using a tool that can write the data to a, a data file that inspection sync can read. 
So if you're using paper and pencil, you're going to need to use something else to, to use Inspection Sync effectively. Um, once you get to using an inspection app, um, most apps we can, or some apps we can get to work with Ecotrope. Um, if you're using an app that you built yourself, uh, you know, then you can make it do whatever you want and make it work with Inspection Sync. Wow. Well, thank you. Speedy answer yeah. there. <laughs> uh, out of time. That, yeah, exactly. Uh, I think we can uh, wrap it up there. There are a few, one or two questions still remaining, but I will reach out to you all either individually or I'll put a last minute chat here. But I grabbed uh, everybody's name and everybody's email, so I'll be sure to follow up with those. Um, but David, I think we're all set on this end. All righty. I appreciate everybody. And we'll uh, yeah follow up with uh, everybody that had outstanding questions here. Thank you.